We're not going to even freeze those crickets out. Just a bunch of stubborn crickets. And that's what we is. And I don't understand it, but that's what it is. We look at things and we'll make up all kinds of reasons why not to get involved in order to stop the harm that's coming upon us. And that's kind of a fascination to me, although I, I can understand it. And I understand that we would rather do other things, but that's not going to really help us in this problem. And the problem is multidimensional, multifaceted. It's just they're coming at us from all over the place. A little lot of minions working on this. They've had a lot of time to think about it and had a lot of, of uh, experience, and the worst of it, against us on how to exploit people and how you, and I try to explain behind the woodshed here, how you're exploitable. And I've referenced quite a few documents that you can read to a little verify some of the areas. People don't want to take a moment to do that. They will leave themselves vulnerable. And as I said, it's, it's the uh, double-edged sword. You, you ought to see the humility of seeing how, how easily you can be confounded, even beyond ways that you wouldn't even know. Uh, it, it's also a strength that now you know that could happen and you send, you send up uh, guards for your own self that you didn't know were needing to be there. And at least that's my experience. So you can take that for what that's worth. People may or may not. A lot of people want to argue with a, a lot of what I say. And uh, I think I find that it's mostly um, a lot of people will just do it without actually contributing anything beyond that. And that's a real, a real problem. Uh, if you're not, again, as I've said, I think I said it last week, if you might not agree with what I'm doing. You may not understand uh, the way things I understand it. But at least communicate with me to show me your, what you've done that does work or better. A better understanding. Do you understand? I hear, I come here every week to tell lots of people uh, what I think, uh, what I see, how I have my experience, my research. And if it's wrong, I'm also misinforming a whole lot of people. Which means if you're being silent on something that works and I'm wrong, you're contributing to uh, my delinquency and their delinquency in a very negative way. And so we, we need to really stop any the psychological division and, and be honest with ourselves. We either have a better way or we don't, and we better learn seek one out or find it or pick up something for the moment. You know, any bucket of water in a fire, folks. And I, I can just I try to maybe it sounds a little harsh, uh, but uh, experience is showing me I have to be a little harsh. I'm not really the taskmaster. I guess I could be. I guess I could get really insultive. I don't I don't find that to be uh, for myself. It, it just violates me. So. I don't, um, I, I don't tend toward that, and uh, so this is this is it. This is what you get. What you get, people will accept it or they won't. They will reject it, and uh, I would hope that we move beyond our, our thoughts about all this. Uh, for those on past cast, recast, or podcast, or the archive, this is BTWRLM two four six. I hope those numbers are right. I believe that's right. Well, you can get the content if you're uh, on another bro uh, network that's posting, like ucy.tv, or even at the Spreaker or wherever. I mean, uh, Mines, BitChute, we're all we're got lots of lots of places now, and I thank everybody everywhere that's been promoting this this um, broadcast wherever you can. It is not a it's not like it used to be. My my listenership's not like it used to be when I was at Oracle, but it it, it is gaining, and over time, I notice it's really kind of amazing. How many people will click in and listen? I don't know how long you're listening, but you listen. And uh, I do know I got a YouTube uh, combat uh, combat going on from last broadcast between two people. I'd ask that the, I mean, you can go ahead and have your discussions, but bring bring uh, the substance of it. The gentleman that's ta talking about the Bundy issue and questioning, uh, he has the uh, so-called chain of title that he believes is there. Uh, I would ask that uh, gentleman, and I think it's a gentleman, uh, to go, why don't you go to Nevada and ask to see the document that they claimed back in the late 1880s uh, for the forage in the water. Stop claiming you think this sh the title is what you see uh, around the public record. Uh, my colleague went. I trust the colleague that he saw it. It's there, and it uh, is a claim no different than any other claim that anybody would do to dispose of use of the land on the public, uh, the public land to public domain. And I, I I don't mind the communication the the if there's an argument to have 
but, but I like to see people come with uh, more than as one person was also one of a poster was saying uh, copy cut and paste if you don't have a piece of information go get it this is what like we can go back to real journalism stop listening to what you hear stop seeking stop seeking the, the, the your opinion better than uh, what might be go to the sources of all this stuff now, I, I don't even need the gentleman's claim of uh, paper I understand I can't remember how it was described to me this is back in in 2014 folks so you know and I just I just keep very just light touch on all this information it, it really for me it just kind of goes down the wayside I don't really pick keep it going until I really need it if I know it's there that's what I remember okay I know I if we come to bear on that we, we can use that paper and I, I think it was explained to me it's in a it's in a rolled up tube or something and you and he pulls it out and it's an old paper it's it sits there it doesn't start from when the Bundys got the acquired the the the, uh, the, the ranch so called in uh, 40 something this is a claim this is and this is a forbearance claim from what I can tell if if nothing else as I've been describing so my other question would be for the posters that are that are in argument about the Bundy situation did you even listen to the broadcast so are you, and I don't know, you know, I hear poll trolls and stuff. I don't really get into all that. I just see what I see. I can't even get into the, I don't really know, I want to know if I want to get into the YouTube account. That's a, that's a Vince's area. He does a great job of posting it up. Grimner is in there. I don't know who else has access. Uh, I just see the front end. I can't even get into a comment uh, because of all this. So uh, that's up all to you all. But uh, I'd like to see us have a better conversation uh, about this. Don't be working on what you think is real go find it out go see it for yourself and so in lieu of me having to go down my colleague went down back in 2014 we uh attempted to give cliven some information it was rejected uh pretty much uh, wholesale but it doesn't matter uh, we got to see that there was a, we verified and this was actually on a somewhat official level later uh, for Jefferson Mining District, we were because we're we're into that producer thing. You know, we want to pro use a law to protect producers, and you know they have on that claim they have mineral rights. So we are interested in that, uh, and that everybody was uh, a treaty, uh, a treated fairly based on their conveyance as well. And so there was an interest for a, a mining district to look into that uh, again and related to how an agency would be mistreating the situation. We've already identified, as I've said it on Twitter before. We've identified that the Secretary of Interior, from which the agency, or the BLM, sits inside that, is a cult of crime. There's no doubt in our mind. And the FBI will back that up. And I said this all in the front of the Twitter. Uh, uh, the, there's no, apparently not much support for those comments, but that doesn't matter. We, we know that there's no law enforcement capacity uh, in the BLM. Maybe I'll, I'll do an amendment here to that Twitter, which you only have so much space. For those of you that are interested to go read this stuff, this is not, I don't just say this because I have an opinion to say. Uh, these are the things you lay down, or the, or the authorities you lay down right on, on, a, uh, on the, on the ground, on the ground, on a list, and you, you, you give a, you give an accounting of what's where and how, who has it. And you can go quickly, for those of you that listen to me and don't, don't just post on the, uh, wherever you post and don't listen to the broadcast for any length of time. Uh, for those of you that listen and you want to do, check this out, I want you to go read, uh, 43, USC 1733. Excuse me, my memory was going slow there. A whole bunch of stuff comes to my mind when I do this because there's a whole train of study you can do and it all comes together. It all interrelates, so it's not on its own. But go read 43 USC 1733. That's the enforcement statute. Look very, very carefully there, folks. There's no... If I, if I can paraphrase it, the, the, there has to be a contract with the local sheriff to for the enforcement capacity, and then there's a then there's a contract that's written in the in the state that they're in, and then they have to be certified under the state, and they have to get a license to be a certified uh, law enforcement officer. Well, that's cert, that's a commerce certificate again, see folks. So th th we're not going real far away from what I keep focusing us on, uh, and and so I, I mean just uh, this, this thing's not that hard to to, to work out. But there's no law enforcement authority to BLM. We've known that. The, the documentation that came out of the uh, case that became such a revelation for everybody else, I'm just saying, well, this is what the law says. Of course they have no BLM. They have no law enforcement. They call themselves law enforcement, but it doesn't exist. And so the posters that are coming in and having another opinion, thank you for coming in. Uh, and if it's relative to a thumbs down, I wish you'd point that out so I can kind of I can come in later and, and, and 
speak to those things. If there's a, I may be educated. It doesn't matter. Most of the time, I'm I'm really not given new information to change the fact, or, or I can be more specific to getting, like I say today, I did did an augment last week to show where the Bundys would have, where the law enforcement does, and that wasn't part of the discussion. But there's a whole lot of information people don't have that's right in the black and white, and I ask you all over and over, read, listen to the broadcast. I know maybe some of it's not in your interest area, but I tie lots of things in, and I give you sources for all of that. Most of the time, I think I'm, I don't think I've been too wrong at all, at all, literally, and it's not here that I'm here to be making store. It's just the fact that I'm just speaking from either experience or insight based on things I've seen that's been told to us. Agenda 21 is not a law, but it's it's something you have to read because that's an, uh, an affront. It's another type of occupation that does destroy us. So it's like knowing the enemy. So these things aren't necessarily all in law. They're in, in things that are attacking us and the statuses and the things that, that are out there, the tools that attack us, the tools that bring us down, bring us under, as they might have said in the, in a days past when the and this is coming up more and more. I'm able to answer more and more this taxes theft stuff. You know, you guys, you guys are, uh, you know, trying to point something out. I, I can see you have no no depth of comprehensive analysis, but it's worse than theft. I keep telling you this, and and the meme pictures don't change, so no one's listening, uh, and no one cares to listen. Uh, it, it's extortion, and it's in the black and white, folks. That's not my opinion. It's worse than just a theft. It's extortion. It's official extortion. It's wrongful extortion. Where do I know that? Y'all, all y'all that have been listening to me should be able to recite this before I even get there. Where is it stated that taxes is extortion? It's not just theft. And I, my, my disappointment is if people got it, got it right, they'd probably get it. They'd probably have it be stating more in the black. But it's worse. It's worse than the memes are saying. And I think that de- that deficiency in us is what's uh, minimizing. It, it, it makes it for a quick turn of a phrase, but it doesn't make it for the for the fact of the reality. And then it, we don't go looking deeper. And, and I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna say something about it. I will now because I'm talking about it anyway the taxes. You you know what, folks? You all this nonsense with this white privilege or this black lives matter. All this color. This supposed to be a colorblind society, and we're all of a sudden focused back in color. I thought we were way past that. I really did. I never, I've never been brought up to be in all that. I don't care what, you, what, what your back. I do care about what your background, because if it's different, I want to know more about it, because it's kind of neat to find out about other people, like I've told you before. But relative to a difference that makes a difference, a distinction that makes a difference that causes trouble, I've never looked at all this, uh, this nonsense that we hear today. You don't know what your white privilege is, folks. And as I think of my flash, I think. And I only got in late. I said, I'm, it's a wrong time for me to come in and listen to Grammy Mary's broadcast. But I think she actually uh, hit the nail on the head. Or maybe it was the uh, maybe it was their other broadcast. What is it um, on uh, Dork Dork Table? Uh, she made a comment. She said, "Well, I think they're about uh, talking about taxes." Uh, I can't remember what the question was. It was just the thought about the, now that she said something. Well, I think the problem was with taxes. And 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 she was right, but she didn't go to. Go to the source, not a criticism, because most people don't talk in law like I kind of focus on. But go, where is it, folks? I don't even see it in the chat. I quickly look over. I don't see nobody put it up. Where is the definition that it's not taxes and not just theft? You want to know where your white privilege is? It's also in the same statute that taxes is not merely theft. You, you want to talk about what the problem is, and everybody in that same statute is then treated equally. So I don't know why there's this discussion in the world about why, why it's okay to say your white lives matter, white whatever, black whatever, brown, I don't care. You're all treated equally under the law, and that is to be able to do what? My long-time listeners. And I see Grimner saying taxation is theft is a good meme. People understand theft. They do, but they don't understand that it's uh, the, the the missing the point by saying no. That's the law. This is the the prison you live in. That's what they're missing. They don't get the next thing. They just kind of go off the meme. Let's like uh, end the Fed. It ends there. Nobody researches past that, and you have to research past this stuff. You have to get a more comprehensive foundational understanding of what we're really dealing with. Because if you stay in that meme thing, and thank you for putting that up. I understand I understand it's a good, quick meme. That's our problem. That's what they funnel us into, these quick, easy-to-understand concepts that you end it right there. And this broadcast is about taking something to task. 
and going with the principle and never being never lifting the principle wherever, even once you come out from behind the woodshed. So we get brought into these things. This is not just theft. I understand that people. I got it. I, in fact, I I really am, admire a lot of people that do this so-called meme stuff that really kind of concisely state these really fundamental things in pictures and whatever. In really unique ways. I appreciate that. But when it stays there for this long and doesn't go beyond, and then I'll periodically throw in, you know, it's worse than what you're saying, and you can prove that. And we really need to go talk about that. And maybe you uh, geniuses on how to do memes can maybe bring that up. Uh, I, there's no reflection. It's crickets on that point. And we really have to transcend this 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 issue. We really do. So, uh, it's okay, so I'm going to say, I've been giving you much time, I haven't seen it come up in the, ch in the one chat. Uh, it, it, you know it's your equal rights. It's right in the law that your white privilege is equal rights. And all those freed men that, that were rounded up after they were freed were brought in uh, as well to these equal rights. And where is that? But none other than your what they call your civil rights. It's right in the black and white. You go to 42 U.S.C. 1981. And you shall be subject to taxes. That's your right, equally. It's by exactions of every kind and no other. Exactions has only one definition. It's wrongful extortion. And the only one doing that is the government. When you live under intimidation in a country, the system rules by intimidation. That is the terrorist. That's a definition you'll find in a book of knowledge you're supposed to have done printed in 55. It was actually printed before, but I couldn't get a picture of it a long time ago. Uh, so in 1955, the essential book of knowledge will tell you of the Webster's uh, consolidated uh, book of knowledge will tell you uh, that uh, the terrorist is a system, that a, system a government that rules by intimidation. And this chap, this equal rights that you all are, your white privilege, it says, as white citizens, folks. It says right there, if people would just read what I say, this is not an argument. This is not not a division, divisive making thing. And if you're making a divisive thing, then you're actually you're subverting your own power. You don't understand any of this. So it's right in there, 42 U.S.C. 1981. Anybody want to go read it and slow down and read it clearly and read it over again? It's coming up over and over now. In fact, this week I think I don't think I've been able to. I don't know that I've ever tweeted more about. Uh, how uh, 1981, Section 1981, actually imposes itself wherever you speak. In this tax reform thing, no tax. this is a tax reform, this is theft reform. No, it's extortion reform. Go to the law about it. If you're going to talk on a meme, let's go to the fact of it. Oh, th th uh, t theft reform? No, it's extortion reform. I thought that made a better statement, but no one picks it up. And no one originated it, More, than, I guess more to my disappointment. No one's originating from, they don't go to the source to go find it. They just come up with their mind, which is a good creative start, but it's actually worse. And I think extortion reform actually had a better ring to it than just theft, taxes as theft. So I don't know that it's, it's actually uh, people understand it better. I think it's just that's all that, for the most part, that's all people have in them to bring to the creative process. And so where are we going to go? Are we going to keep it in the meme? Are we going to move it into the truth? Uh, the more rea more truthful reality of what's going on, and then start dealing it with that. The, the theft by uh, theft is taxes theft also undermines the knowledge of how taxes are not theft, actually. And I don't want to talk about it because that'll cause so many people to get uh, uh, bent uh, or whatever uh, ruffled. I, I don't even want to enter into the water. And there's a so-called, and I'm just astonished to see lots of people. In fact, I might get to it if I stop talking about this other stuff. Uh, but I'll get to my tabs one of these days, one of these hour moments. Uh, that people are actually in the so-called liberty movement, actually agreeing. People with an independent, a non-dependent mind are actually agreeing that things should be taxed. I'm blown away, folks. I don't even know what to say. It's it's just astonishing to watch the incongruity of thought, and it's I think it's all based in a well lack of a foundational basis first of all, the lack of seeing the words, the lack of actually understanding what you're seeing is actually what's up, and then you have to go to the extension of being able to read into what how does that then turn out to what we're seeing, and it, it comes out as a, as a an effect, some action in in the world essentially against us, and so there's a different a continuing thought that goes on that. At any rate, I do appreciate the the artistic 
statements that are coming up, but they're not fulfilled enough, and they don't go beyond. And they and I've just noticed this rut. It's a rut that gets built, and so long now that there now people are accepting. Okay, tax is theft in this area. I'll accept that because it means a better deal. It's really a fa- amazing to watch. And it's, I guess, my, and I'm, I'm going to move it over this way. And it's my, one of my cons- uh, uh, criticisms of Bitcoin, uh, the digital currencies, uh, that people think, uh, the evidence is there that it's being moved into value taxation principles, and they're okay with that for some reason. And they don't think it's the same fiat thing that's coming on. They think it's all independent and different. And all the indications are it's not at all what we're being told or as it was sold to us to start accepting. And so, I mean, we could take a, a discussion on it, but it's not, for me, I, I don't, it ends pretty quickly. The, the technocrats are, that's a technocratic tool. And uh, for all the anonymity and all this other stuff, there's so much evidence to show that's just a fraud, just a pipe dream. And as I said, and they're moving it over. I said they're going to do this, and here's here's the um, uh, what, what, what maybe people are missing. As I said, you can use the coins. They're going to make them illegal somehow, and you you can use them. That'll be fine, but you may pay a penalty to get caught. But the other thing is now you see, and I mentioned the Coinbase and the IRS, what, what's going to happen is you're going to be tied back into a taxation system. And if you fail there, it's not going to be about using the Bitcoin. It's going to be about failure to pay your taxes on it. So all you libertines were thinking, oh, we got the anonymity and we can do what we want. No, no, it was set up to be able to catch you up for doing with it and get you back into paying taxes. And when you don't, you're not going to be hit for using Bitcoin. You're going to be hit for tax avoid, tax evasion. And no one will have listened to me over the broadcast times and taken notes about, you better have a word in your mouth about how you're going to address that affront, that attack against you, that presumption of, of attachment and guilt. You're going to have to understand how to do that at that time. And so do I give you a little bit of synopsis? Again, I think I will. It gets, kind of seems to get lost. It's a due process problem. You write in the tax code. It's not how you respond to it, like let's say someone similar to, um, uh, well, I don't even think about these people much, but uh, darn it, Larkin Rose. It's not how he got dealt with. It, uh, as I said, getting into an argument inside the code and then arguing that you know it better. That, no, you have to avoid the, the, stat, the code at all. And there's a due process condition up front that's never done, that I haven't seen ever done. And so you, you, need, to, you need to look at that. You need to do what the statutes say, what the commissioner was going to declare you to have, this, uh, to have this status that's doing an activity and how that was. And I told you, be careful. They'll just tell you that it is, and you're going to have to have another answer. And I said, well, so how, what if you're, they're talking about the exchange of coins themselves. You notice there's a little difference there. It's not about exchanging the coin for something. It's about exchanging the coin for something else because you're dealing in coins, so-called, the fictional, the fiction. Where did they have the jurisdiction over that? It's kind of an amazing, that'd be an interesting thing to have them to have disclosed right up front before I even got started. But if you do just do exchange of, uh, of coins, I'm not so sure, I mean, that would be the only question I can imagine. How did you get jurisdiction of that? Because the value is tied to my status as a taxpayer. How did you get to destroy my presumption of innocence of being available to that. Now we're back to the question. See, so you have to get back to that due process. Where was the due process that you were given that you told me I was in an activity uh, that was taxable and I had to make records and make, uh, take, make records and, how does that work? Take records and make books, I think is this in the phrase, and where I was supposed to keep those as a business, as a commerce entity. <laughs> There's an entity in commerce. No one even understands this is right there to do, and I hear lots of stuff, and uh, that doesn't make reality about how you're going to be treated. And so you can think about what you think about. Uh, when it comes time to have to do something, you'll have stepped into the swamp that you that they're never going to clear. You're never going to drain it. Uh, and you'll be stepping into it. You'll sl- that's a stinking abyss. I've been calling it a stinking abyss all this time. They want to drain it. It ain't going to drain. It's a bottomless pit. And so we can go lots of we can give lots. We can tell ourselves lots of stories. But this Bitcoin is really problematic to me. Not not as this. Uh, this fantastic pet rock coming on, or the Beanie Baby, uh, or the next new kind of cool thing to be in and then get get ready to jump out of. Uh, no, not not I'm not talking about that. And it is a neat tool, but it's not a tool that we created and really and, and that we have control of. And if we did, it's being wrested from us as we sit here and talk about it. And then we have the underlying dangers, which gets me back to my tabs. Uh, the cryptocurrency, South Korean cryptocurrency exchange goes bust. 
after hack attack. Uh, again, it's just not going to be, I don't see a way that this is a foolproof. Uh, whether you do it on your own mistake or whether someone comes in and, and attacks one of these exchanges, whether or not the IRS is all over them, your value could be evaporated. Uh, the cryptocurrency exchange in South Korea said it was shutting down and filing for bankruptcy after it was hacked for a second time A second time this year. It lost 17% of its assets in cyber attack. The UBIT, as I see it here, uh, exchange said it was very sorry it had been forced to shut down, adding the customer's would get back about 75% of the value of the cryptocurrency they have lodged with the exchange. Now, there was a, uh, this is what a story I think last week I was saying. This was what, a lot of the money what they had was, uh, or excuse me, it's not money. A lot of these, these, uh, these uh, virtual uh, electrons are uh, put in a, what they called a cold wallet. And it wasn't available to the hacker, which is pretty cool. But they did take the 70% operating capital. I talked about this last week a little bit. Uh, but which is under which can be under scrutiny. Then uh, they were able to isolate it. Uh, so that that that's something. But you're not you're not um, immune from this hack. Now I I couldn't find it again, but I thought I saw a quick Twitter go through that said that they were actually getting back online, and that intrigued me because they said they were going into bankruptcy over this, and then they said like within two days they were back on. They were going to start doing uh, the exchange again, and I, I can't I couldn't refine that. So I apologize for not finding the source of that. I hope that wasn't just an, an aberration in my thoughts. Uh, but the underlying thing here that I found more importantly, not just that it came back, who funded that? They lost like $5 million or so dollars lost to this hack. But who funded that to get them back online if they did come back, notwithstanding the bankruptcy? The bankruptcy doesn't mean they're dead. It just means they're reorganizing their debt. And the creditors need to come in now and do their thing. And so I don't know if that's a scam as well. Not that I say that bankruptcy is a scam. Sometimes you need it. But uh, interesting thing. The interesting strategy on this that uh, really bothers me a little bit on whether or not these exchanges can be set up for a takedown for themselves. Now, the other thing was they were all now used uh, to, to blame North Korea. As North Korea gets inflamed and inflamed and inflamed, as we walk into uh, you know wanting to make more war around the world, they want to blame North Korea. Remember, don't ever forget, the NSA put the tools out, the CIA, whoever they were, they put the tools out for all this to happen that anybody could be blamed for anything now. And so if this is a uh, this theft could have been done by an agent to Israel, uh, United States, anybody. Uh, Ch- could have been China, could have been Russia, uh, could have been whoever, could have been North Korea. We can't tell. We can't tell enough that anybody should be able to blame anybody else either. Remember, all the tools are there to hide all of this. This could have been an action by the United States to attack South Korea's exchange, to take this out a little bit and then blame it on North Korea to start more problems because they want to do this invisible cyber war thing upon us and, and create, create this whole uh, nonsense uh, around, well, how important your digital life is and who's, who's attacking it. See, you're, they're funneling you into a, into a box canyon as well with all this. So I'm loose on it. I'm just telling you it's vulnerable. It's vulnerable as a tool for whomever. The hack, this hack for $5 million may not even been the object for someone that was a state-run uh uh, op, op going on. I just wanted to point you something. This, these digital realms are subject to whomever's manipulation. And so we're going to have to get involved. Uh, we're going to have to understand that's a, uh, well, if I can say it, uh, our, our digigenetics is being altered real time. This is digital epigenetics is being altered real time when we are dealing in this area. And our lives will be changed. Our response, our organism uh, is going to be changed. And then we're subject to, as I said last week, the global mycelium that learns its own uh, uh, so-called artificial intelligence. Uh, and it understands it goes rogue because it has the better way. And we don't understand nature enough to know there's a sun that wasn't, you know, that that can't be the cause of our of our so-called climate change hoax, uh, fraud. It's fraud. Bend your crime. Uh, no substantial hypothesis and relational hypothesis without proof hasn't been moved into theory. What's a one one they prove every day they can't. This is our new life. This is the hackable world. They run it into the big data. They run it into the digital realm. Your digital edu- uh, your digital genetics is being changed as we speak before you even understood how. It, it, this is just a fascinating thing. I want to uh, call your attention to it. Uh, so trading goes. Uh, so right after that, then there was this big Bitcoin fail. You know, this is the big speculation thing. Uh, trading goes down on Co- at Coinbase. 
one of the biggest uh, Bitcoin pack, uh, marketplaces for two hours amid price plunge. You get into the digital currency, they said they closed this exchange. This is the one the IRS has tacked into as well. Now, the United States seems to make small, we, we seem to be cent U.S. centric. It makes a big deal here. No, Asia is, is actually doing the cryptocurrency way more than the United States uh, people, the Americans or anybody in Europe are doing. Uh, so that's, you gotta be careful about that too. Not to be careful, I mean, they can just be people. The point is that the sphere, the sphere of influence is not America centric at all. Uh, but trading goes down. Now, if your trading goes down in your exchange, how, how are you gonna, how are you gonna live your life? Is, is another vulnerability. I just want to call your mind to it if you haven't heard. And again, I think, uh, and I say, I'll have to say the alternative. You really have to, as you go into this uh, brave new world, digital world, big data controlled by big, uh, big industrial, military industrial complex uh, things uh, with, uh, who knows what meanings behind it that they'll tell us. We can just surmise a lot. Uh, you're going to be susceptible to all these shutdowns, breakdowns, interferences, obstructions, thefts, and then extortions on top at Coinbase when the IRS comes in and wants to know about your exchange values. No one will understand that you go, wait a minute, when was the, when did we have our due process required meeting that said I was a person liable and you had five things or so to tell me? When did that happen? So until that happens, uh, you know, I don't have first notice that I'm a person liable and that you have right, I'm innocent of all that attachment. And then if you listen behind the woods and more, you'll start to realize what I've been saying on how you start building up your fortifications if they do focus in on you. So Coinbase gets shut down. Well, this is another problem. Let's go back and then. We have a Bitcoin falling. Uh, I've heard up to up to 25 or 40 per, 45 percent the value. Uh, you know, then the, up and down. It's all. It's just like another market. It's being manipulated. I hear hedge funds are jumping in. We talked, I think I mentioned that a few weeks ago. This is just a volatile Wild West city. I mean, this is just Western city. Uh, Wild West is working on this thing. You may not be able to get into your uh, your money. The IRS may take a bit of it. Who knows? It at least puts you in a lot of trouble to have to answer to it, if nothing else. And so, again, vulnerabilities in the digital world. The uh, Then the, here comes an interesting, uh, this is where I was saying before about people actually agreeing that this stuff should be taxed. And this was uh, from Charles U. Smith. I'm really surprised in a way, although I've, I've pointed out his, uh, relative to my thoughts, uh, and my observations and experience and my understanding of law and things and how it works uh, and how he's missed a couple of points. I can see how he would want to go down here, but he actually, uh, he actually uh, agrees at some point that these cryptocurrencies need to be regulated and the government needs to have their part of it. It's really, it was kind of a fascinating uh, thing. A Wild West free-for-all is conducive to scammers, and so some thoughtful regulation that protects users is to be welcomed. I'm in the middle of the article. I'm not reading the whole thing. Government tax income and capital gains. That's a whole other concept. After you've been told that you're a subject person liable, what is the income? What's it based on? And what's the tax? They'll show you a definition, but that's not going to tell you anything. Anyway, so that governments tax income and capital gains. This is how they fund their activities. Well, look at the United States. Is it really, folks? You find out that's a false statement. Uh, clearly, he says, gains reaped from cryptocurrencies are no different than gains reaped uh, from other speculations and investments. So they should be recorded in tax in the same manner. So there's a little bit, there's a big lot said right there. For, but the surface of it, he's agreeing because of the speculative nature that the government should have its hand in it. I'm really kind of surprised here with this guy. It, and it's not a, I don't have much more of a thought more of it. I'm not criticizing him too deeply. I, I understand that there's people that hold this. But, but by talking in this way, we're not looking at the fundamental problem where we get the meme taxes theft when you realize but most of you folks that are men and women passing those around on Twitter are not the person liable. You've been presumed to be and you believe you're a taxpayer. And that's what's caused you to be it. And so that for you, tax is theft. And I show you, no, it's extortion. It doesn't matter. It's over a status and you've agreed to be the status. So you've missed the other, you've missed this point. That's why the meme fails terribly. So I am surprised that there's, a again, people who you would think are libertine are running to the government for protection. Now, there, I understand there is this need, but 
so that's a, another j uh, delicate discussion that has to have be had, especially in light of the people that would invent terms like statist and uh, think anarchy is outside of a system and is its own system. That that doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even follow. Uh, everyone has their own excuse about how that's not the way what I've just said. But in fact, when you st I keep and I've been looking at it for a long time now. Uh, the, there's no been no actual discussion more than I hear someone berating someone else for their position and, and nobody really settling down and doing what set of uh, definitions are you actually using? The made up ones since the 60s and, that look like anarchy is something special that it was never uh, beyond and a utopia-ish, uh, more libertine than it actually is. Uh, disregarding all the history that got it, the history that got us there, and the actual involvement and in why we come to where we are, with the, the really fallen nature of man, of humans, and then the man that allows it, uh, is just uh, the absence of that in, 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 uh, inclusion has brings on all these things I see that gets us all off on the point that we see these kinds of answers. People are just jumping from the frying pan to the fire because they really don't have any understanding of what's really going on, and then we don't settle down to get the answer from those that have the power to hurt us with it. And so the question you make is in only in the area where they have the power to hurt you, not where the one that they shouldn't be a, a, a trespassing, encroaching that subject matter. And you put the question out because as long as you have a, a valid question before an administrative imposition... There is no crime. There's no notice. It's all about commercial notice. There is no notice to you. That's all the laws are. These statutes and codes, they're notice to you that the, that the system, anybody who would, could use, and even as a property owner against another one, this was the objective basis, and you were given notice, as long as you're given notice, and you're given notice, that that was how you were to behave, and that's what you couldn't encroach on somebody, and then they have a remedy in that when you did. That was the line. And as long as you're given notice, now you have you bring on the uh, culpability, but maybe the liability as well if it's an imposed duty or obligation. And so, we, if you look at an administrative side, you can create a question, and it's valid; it's not made up. And it's wait, that's what I do for you here. I, I tell you how to make those questions. Uh, they're they're not uh, they're avoidance questions because it's not it shouldn't attach in the first place. They're not evasion questions, and they're not made up. They are particularly targeting certain requirements within the administrative imposition of the power that can come against you and hurt you. I don't care what you call yourself. They'll call you something. That's what's going to be important. And so anyway, evidence that even people in the system, I don't know Charles U. Smith. I never talked to him. You know, I only talk to through what he writes and some of it which I find he's insightful. Uh, on this, I was really a bit surprised. And I'm hearing more and more people agreeing to legalization and taxation just because it was better than the thing before. That is the method. They got you to compromise. This is like the the pot thing, the, the marijuana. Oh, wow, folks. I mean, really look at that. Really look at what they did there. That it, that's it right there for all y'all. I mean, if you wanted to see what I've been talking about, they did it to marijuana. And they're going to do more. It's fascinating. And what people will start to allow and accept is okay. The new normal it's a deviance of the what should be right, actually. What should be uh, off limits. They, they bring it in, they cause it to be an outlaw, and then they embrace it, and you say, okay. That's the consent. So there's another explanation with this, all this going down about the Bitcoin drop. And again, this is for the speculators, but I want to point out, just be careful when you're getting into this. To me, this is kind of cool. It's, it's the pet rock thing. How long do you stay in before you just sell off your pet rock right before the, the market falls out completely? That That's kind of like the cool the cool part. Do you start selling off some of your some of your uh, your pet rocks as you start seeing the bubble get higher and higher? You start selling some off to make a you know, percentage of what you have, so at least you capture some of the value as it's rising and leaving the rest to gain as high as it can go, and then gamble on that last little bit. That was another part of the game. You can play that. That's cool. I mean, that's the part of it. But now the IRS is going to be looking in. See, so it's almost too late as far as that goes, and some people will just say, "Oh, I'm, I don't care. I'll, I'll pay the tax." That's fine. But they're missing the point. It's not about paying the taxes. Where you're, where you're going to stand up for yourself and say, wait a minute, but I wasn't the person liable. What part of my natural life is, is taxable by the government? What type, what kind of my intellectual input was taxable by the government? What type of my livelihood that I chose to do this is, is taxable by the government? In other words, go back and say, what 
things that you had within your power to tax was me or what I do. And where was that declared? Where was that meeting held that I would have a chance to answer to that? So, we, again, I, just, I say this stuff. Uh, to me, it's a clear thought. I don't know what it sounds like to you on the other end. I did, re, again, I periodically have realized I do talk pretty quick. I, I, can, I can't tell you more than I apologize. You're just going to have to listen. Maybe turn, when you get it to the video, you can turn the speed down or something. Uh, but I just can't. It just comes out of me, folks, to say this stuff, and it just comes out this fast. I'm not, I have no regulator that way. I want you to know everything I have in my mind. I think it's valuable. It's important. It help. It can help you, given you find yourself in these areas. Uh, but it just comes out. It doesn't have a, a regulation speed to slow down. And so we got, what other things that may have affected the price? Again, this is your, this is your, when they start moving this in and uh, they start uh, outlawing some and agreeing to others, and you start finding yourself com 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 uh, compromising in. They got you compromising in at the point of uh, being able to get you into the taxing that should be taxed, that should be regulated and all that. And I'm not saying that things shouldn't be regulated. What I'm saying is that for all the libertines that want to want small government, you can't invoke this thing in the government on something that's so basic as what you're doing in your, in your world, in your life for value that you're going to go work somewhere else and trade. It's no different than a mind me. You know, we talked about the correlation, and they did this on purpose to make it sound like it was legitimate. You were mining bitcoins like you mine gold. Believe me, there's a world of difference. And uh, but we can take the analogy, and they were very genius about how they did this. You have to go extend the work. They thought the expending electricity was the work. No, it's a man's or a woman's labor. Uh, and I don't say I say that advisedly. It's not labor. And the women were having babies. This is your livelihood, your life being expended in work. And there is no right in the government to tax it. And so this is where I'm speaking to. Where did they jump? This thing that you do, that you create in your life to do these things became taxable. Where? Now, I have an idea. I have three or four different ideas how they did it. Uh, that would be another discussion, though, given you have the subject matter down as to how they were to co-opt that. And so we got these other discussions that I don't even talk about because we never get there. Because they have nobody setting themselves up in doing, they would rather capitulate or compromise uh, their, 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 um, their existence. Oh no, we should legalize a pot and tax it just because it, it's something now I get to have it. Well, yeah, that's a good side benefit. All the people now that would uh, use it as an herb for their health now aren't going to be treated as the felons uh, that that they weren't anyway. So, uh, not, not only get back lost on that, but the Bitcoin value, uh, again, susceptibility to currency, uh, to these uh, uh, currency trade-off type things, these uh, value, devaluations, it was also surmised uh, Trump's tax bill may be the reason for the crypto route. And uh, this is a pretty surly worded article. I don't want to read too much from it uh, for the uh, sensitive. And uh, I do hope I have sensitive ears because we, we, we want to keep that that childlike innocence, don't we? And I think we have, we're more intelligent about this. It is striking. Uh, it is dri drives the thought home with the, with the conversation in this uh, link. But, uh, uh, but I don't think we need it to understand uh, that there was this uh, new this tax reform, this extortion reform that was going on with that Trump just did. So let's now put that in context. <laughs> uh, that uh, he just signed. That apparently was going to do a whole lot for the corporations. Again, Republicans are typically wanted to show you that they want to help business, and typically you see the things that they do tend to do that in tax reform. But remember, tax tax is extortion. So what kind of reform would they do? Well, they gave the extortion more upon. Uh, you uh, and less upon the big corporations that are uh, dealing with you. A and uh, oh, as I look down, I see Grimner saying you need someone to transcribe your shows, f uh, folks. And Grimner, uh, I think if you go into the YouTube and you go into the uh, options or someplace in the in the, on the page, and there's a uh, m multiple options, go in and you'll find a transcribe button, and then it'll open up a little window. And when I saw that, that was terrifying to me. Although I actually need some, I need to go back and start collecting up the transcriptions now. Because I was looking for something to do that for myself privately. But YouTube already does that. And I say that with a lot of, a lot of trepidation, I'll just tell you. Because watch your, your words come out in, in, as transcribed and very closely slow. It's not 100% accurate, but close enough. 
uh, it's pretty pretty scary on a lot of levels. But uh, thank you, Grimner, for saying that. Uh, yeah, the, the 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 there's a transcription I guess you could get, and you could go through it and reread all these words I'm saying uh, if you have to read them. But uh, so uh, new limits on the bill would bar cryptocurrency owners from deferring capital gains taxes when trading one type of virtual currency for another, effectively closing the gray area in the tax code. Was what I said. See, they're coming in with the tax adjustments. You, you can do the co- you can do the trading. See, they want you to do all this so-called value. Uh, trading because that's the tax part they want you to do they don't want to shut that door to them they want to siphon from your life and they want to say that well you weren't uh, you had value added from us or this system by what you did and i don't know that that's actually the truth in this but the point is this is how they're shifting it so the new uh tax uh, the extortion uh, reform was to close this gray area uh, which allowed you to make it beneficial more beneficial and so a lot of people won't go for that that's a theory i would say that routes the price a couple of things happened this week though uh, notwithstanding that we were on this uh, you know the speculation side that's always sitting there's a big question mark when does when do most people start taking their profits when do those hedge funds that have jumped in start taking their profits to wait for the bounce and buy at the low side like you normally would on some kind of investing type of of condition like any other so-called market it's not on any kind of market. It's a big fraud system. So that's the other thing. Remember, it's a big fraud system. It's fiat system. You're paying into these bitcoins. Are they are they trading? Does the government trade out your bitcoins for FRNs? Is what you might want to ask the treasury that, that they have a right to now take something from you that wasn't an FRN. And this is another thing. You start looking at all this is a big problem. And when they demanded FRNs, didn't they come in? Didn't they come into um, a violation of the federal law that says they can't demand a particular type of coin and currency. That's black and white too. A lot of you patriots know this is HDR 192. It's actually code, and I can't remember the code number. It's like at 51, 118, or 51, uh, 81, or something like that. I, I don't remember the number. I didn't. I didn't come here prepared to talk about that. But the, did they? Did they? Uh, did they demand a particular type of coin and currency in payment of those taxes? If you look very carefully, they don't. You volunteer it all. And so until you do this ahead of time, before you walk into this liability and then challenge the the imposition of the presumption of the person liable status on you, the man or the woman, then then, uh, they get it. They win it and they get these tax codes through. Remember the 1910 court case that said that the tax code or the 1909 tax code did not change anything in the authority of the federal government upon tax in the 1909 case was about corporations. And so how are they converting your status is, is the one point. And when you're dealing in these FRNs, boy, am I off the point here, but uh, when you're dealing, it's how these thoughts work, folks. When you're dealing in the FRNs, let me, and this came up here just a, a little bit ago, I think uh, uh, on a Twitter, I think, I was able to add one more than the Title 42 tax extortion. I was able to add this other point uh, of the fact that when you deal in financial conditions, kind of financial instruments, then in under 28 U.S.C. 3002, look very carefully for those of you that misstate this, I think it's 28 U.S.C. 3002, you're dealing with a corporation at that point in financial matters. Not all matters, just financial matters. So limit that, but that's what you're dealing with in these in these taxation issues, aren't you? So for those of you that, oh, the, the government's a corporation, well, in fact, they do say, they admit in that capacity they are this corporation. But corporation, as I told you, they've got the body politic as a corporation. That's all all those people that are sitting within the territory of power uh, that can impose upon you. That's you. That's a corporation. That's the aggregate. Is you. And you get your franchises coming out. That's the voting. So I pointed all this stuff out. Actually, I uh, can't remember the guy's name. He's supposed to be an actor. Uh, I thought he was a little bit more aware of this, so I responded back. I said, are you aware that you're like your voter ID and these is a, commer- is a fraudulent imposition of a fraudulent commercial franchise? And the other thing he said, I can't remember. There's a vial. Oh, it was this. It was the right to pay exactions of every kind. It was an extortion. Are you aware of this? No, people aren't aware of this simple stuff. And, and so the the dealing in the financial matters, it starts to pose a. You look at the black and white that explains something to you. You don't turn it into a complaint. You say, well, if that's your status in these financial matters, in under uh, three thousand and two, and under this other statute. Uh, uh, 
I can't remember now, 31 or USC something, I don't remember now. The, the uh, HGR 192 statute is literally printed as a statute now where it says you can't make a particular type of coin of currency. How are you demanding? What's even if you find this out in me? I'm the status of this corporate existence making these things now, these sources derived. How did you get that point? Any so your jurisdiction was over any source. Define a source as it relates to my my natural life. Then how are you demanding these FRNs? Because that's a, a violation. That's a felony. Uh, I think it's a felony underneath the federal law to demand a particular type of coin of currency, which happens to be these Federal Reserve notes. Does anybody put this together? No, I see lots and lots and lots of stuff talking instead of just putting a couple of uh, so, summary bullet points of the code and say, how did you get past all this? How'd you get to be able to presume past all this to, to make a presumption that I wasn't innocent of it? And so everyone presumes themselves, with all this libertine mind, they presume themselves subject. Well, I'm going to have to pay taxes on this. Now, I wanted to know at the Coinbase point, how did they know those people were ta persons liable to the tax if everyone's presumed innocent and they really didn't have an ID on it, everybody? Is it that name I've told you that sits in the commerce secretaries of every state that says it's a business? And then you go find out that it's because that the because the style says it's a business, a corporation in a state somewhere, that you didn't challenge it by proving it doesn't exist? Did you bring that paper with you to your first meeting? Well, well that name that you're using, it doesn't exist as a, as a legal entity for you to, uh, to consider. Why are you touching me? Why are you interfering with my way? I hope you're understanding what I'm telling you here today, folks. This is a, this is really the nuts and bolts of every every everything. It, it's all the same manipulation they've done to it, so it all ends up being the same answer back. If you don't get into arguing with them, you're just looking for the facts. Just show me the facts. How'd you get to that point when you're a limited form? How'd you get to the point where you presumed upon the innocent a guilt, an obligation, a duty, a character, a character, folks? Even that word. I've talked to you about this in Martin Luther King. Oh, I'm off so far off the tabs. Amazing. Uh, you know, the content of your character was a con character back in the uh, 1800s, uh, 50s, 1856 or so. That meant your obligations. Uh, how would you like that? that, the, that you're, you're, he was speaking to the content of your obligations. And then you find out your obligations are tied to an extortion. Boy, they're setting us up all the whole time. My whole life was a big setup to my mind. Setting me up for a fall. And we went ahead with it, didn't we? We agree with it, and we do it now even, oh, we see a little bit of Bitcoin, and we agree. Well, maybe we need to have it regulated. Maybe we have to, maybe we do, folks. But, I mean, we do, if you don't understand the underlying foundation about what's really going to happen underneath that, you have missed the boat. You're probably a drowning man or woman, and no one's going to save you a life raft because in that pool are nothing but the sharks. Nothing but the, uh, the 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 boogie monsters, the swamp monsters that are not going away. The stinking abyss, and you're in it. So a trade drought, uh, the the price of Bitcoin is being pointed out with this new uh, tax, uh, this new extortion uh, reform uh, that Trump agreed to. So all you guys in MAGA, make America great again. Well, it did for a few people, I guess, uh, but it isn't really speaking to men and women, and we need to start making that. A we need to understand that a lot more, not argue about it, just be able to prove that you're not those things that are subject to, even in the financial sense, the corporate capacity of the United States. You understand, did you miss when I said the corporate capacity? That's not a sovereign, folks. I'm pausing. Catch up, folks. I know I'll go quick. How is it the sovereign now? And when you start to realize that it, in there's certain ways the government acts, it's not a sovereign. It has obligations. It has a character. And you treat it that way. And you have to do it right. But you treat it that way. Now the complexion of the uh, of the skin of this starts to change, doesn't it? And I think it does. I just said that as a question. If you don't know, then you, you don't see that. So hey, we're talking a little bit about vulnerabilities in this digital world. This, what, the the digigenetic alterations that are going in real time. And we start accepting it. We become all cozy to it. We even talk about, well, let's try regulation and let's try uh, people keeping people from being scammed. And how are they going to stop hacking, folks? How are we gonna stop the government from ha hacking? What's it, I mean, what's in your wallet, folks? This is a fascinating uh, thing. I'm, I'm fixated, fixated on a bit. What's in your wallet, folks? And then they tell us, Intel inside. And we think that's cool. We think that's great. We don't put the two together. What's in your wallet, folks? I'm pausing again. 
If that South Korean uh, exchange was a op, a government op, what's in your wallet, folks? Yeah, all I can say is Intel inside, and they tell us that right in the, most of the computers. I guess that's why one of my systems is an AMD. Does that matter? Uh, I don't think so, uh, but a little bit. It does. It does matter actually. Massive leak exposes data on 121 million United States households. Kind of doesn't leave many people out, does it? Massive leak exposes data on 123 million house, U.S. households. That's about the population of the, of the, of the, of the town, folks. And again, the vulnerabilities in this digital world is, this, <laughs> AI is going to be uh, running amok, uh, making the more natural selections uh, then we can conceive, and we won't know how. It's really a fascinating look at what we're looking into, walking, uh, walking right into that two by four, folks. It's right, playing itself right in our face. The door to your personal data got left wide open once again, folks. Out of 123 million, which one of you escaped? Re researchers reveal. Well, I'll just give you the answer. It's any of you that were uh, not engaging in the system for probably 10, 20 years, and limited your access. Everyone else. Probably part of this. Researchers revealed Tuesday that earlier this year, <laughs> I didn't even tell you folks, earlier this year they discovered a massive database containing information on more than 123 million American households that was sitting unsecured on the Internet. The cloud-based data repository for marketing and analytics company Alteryx uh, exposed a wide range of personal data about the virtually every American household. So all these important words right there. I won't read more. You can go ahead and uh, figure out what happens when you're, all this information that's been out there has been given uh, available to people if they knew it was there. But this is, again, the vulnerabilities of your digital world, the digital life, the thing that they've made to plug you in. You will plug in. You'll agree to regulation if you get a little bit. You'll agree to some taxation if they just leave you alone. Oh, stop the pain. It's what we are. It's not a judgment. It's a fact. I've called this out. I don't know what to do more about it. Uh, we have our needs, and they know how to press the need, and then they know how to press beyond the need. They do the spelling. They do the things. It's all magic to us, and we don't stop. Wait a minute. You're just a magician. Tell me how you... You're going to show me that trick before I commit, right? That's what we don't do. That's what challenging these authorities are. That's what asking for the due process does. Now, you're a magician, a magi, and I'm not going to allow... Uh, to, to, do, to walk in, to pay attention to the pee in the cup, this cup you're running across the board, and keep tell me to catch the pee. No, no, you, you tell me what you're standing there on the street doing that for. And why am I not just free to walk from it, if you can understand that? And as I'm getting Grimner putting in the information real quick, 125.82 million households in the United States is, I assume, an estimated amount. Uh, so uh, 2 million of you escaped. How's that? Are you the lucky one? And, and, and I think the number of discrepancy is just those that may have not, uh, you know, slipped through the crap, cracks. Uh, I said cracks, and uh, may, may or may not be r r valid. And, and you know that has to be an estimate because of all the, uh, the people that don't enter into the census that they would have to pull from, uh, at least to validate some of the information, or just they have just a bunch of names and numbers, right? So how is that validating the number at all either? But it doesn't matter. Uh, va massive leak, another vulnerability in this digital world. When you give in all the stuff you need to give in to in order to continue to be hooked up, that's the, how they're doing it. That's where they're doing it, and your life becomes a, more and more miserable. You start le realizing how austere everybody is unless you agree to the system that's being provided. And those of us that see the wealth side, which is production in the land, uh, realize that there's the oppression and, and criminal action against it, and I'll just remind you about the Bundys, the Hammonds, Wayne Hage. His wife, their, family, their son, on and on. I don't know. I can't even go through all the names. I don't even want to remember them all. There's too many. I just know they're there. It doesn't matter. Now, they all had their own points, and they did their best, and they did their thing. And you see the system continually constraining those activities, which are the real wealth. It's actually the amplification of Mother Nature's uh, gift, if you will, and gifts uh, for the re resources. Again, minerals are not resources. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Grimner. He says that is census data. So that's all estimated stuff for sure. But anyway, it doesn't matter. 123 million of you, there, as they claim, uh, lo just lost, uh, had your, uh, well, I don't know about lost, had all your information able to be given to anybody who wanted it for any reason. 
and then they want to go around and blame people like North or nations like North Korea uh, for doing any of this stuff is pretty amazing to me. But not, notwithstanding whatever that is, I want to point out vulnerabilities. The cloud is not a place where that uh, smiling head sits uh, that you call God. Uh, it, 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 it's a it's a computer server in somebody's building. It's not a cloud, folks. It's not a thing that can rain on your parade. No, it's a real piece of hardware. It's a computer. And people have them. They're private to them. And they're left unsecure. And that's your future world. And then you get rogue AI that can figure out how it needs to pry itself in in order to do something it thought was a good idea. And, uh, and on that AI, folks, it's not, it's just a bunch of math algorithms. It's really not what people are making out to be. Uh, I really have a, I'm having a problem with this. This is just some intelligent people running equations that the program computers can run that come up with answers based on those formulations. And your life is going to be conditioned or agreed to or as evidence based on someone's, on someone's imposition of that upon you. And if you don't understand about what evidence could be and not be, you're going to be susceptible. You're in the administrative side, it's irrelevant. This is where they got us going. And so, you, again, I can't. part of me doesn't even know how to tell you how terrible it can go. I really can't. All I work on at that point is how am I going to help people understand what they have to say up front in order that that doesn't wash over them and destroy them. And I guess that's really my point. It's again, all those that think, oh, you're going to go to the courts and you, well, you're saying go to the court and get justice. No, I'm trying to show you how you avoid the tsunami destroying you. This, this, these criminals in these, in the, in the, or under the color of authority taking this and saying that they're doing some good for someone to hurt you and that that's the common, good for the common good. Uh, that's just socialism, uh, and if it's done by privateness, it's a private, uh, contract, that all that is, is, is fascism. And you can continue to agree with it. Oh, as long as I get my Bitcoin, as long as I get my profit, I'll pay the tax. It was just a little bit anyway. Oh, I want the regulation. Oh, it's just a little bit of dope. At least I get my pound. But you're missing, you're really missing the focus and you fell right into how this works as a future that they want comes on you. Because you compromised and allowed yourself to be compromised because they gave you just enough of what you wanted to make the rest not worthy to even look at. I guess that's my problem with the theft, the taxes theft meme. It, it, everyone is satisfied the taxes theft, and that's where it ends. And it doesn't. It doesn't by a long, long shot. Intelligence director says government can demand encryption backdoors without having to run it by the FISA court. A set of questions from Senator Ron Wyden directed the Office of Director of National Intelligence uh, have finally received answers. The answers were actually given to the Senate Oversight Committee in July. Again, you don't get to hear about them for six months later, but have just now been made public. Okay, so uh, we can go through the article. I uh, could read it, but they're telling you, folks, that they have not been considering they have to have any permission to go to the companies and put the, put the pressure on them, and they have lots of ways to do it. The IRS is one of them, as a matter of fact. Uh, to get them, just to give them, give the government a back door, and without telling you, and they don't have to ask, and it's all underneath this national security thing, which is the big fraud. It's the pretext. It's the thing they invent. It's the it's the guy, the stupid idiot that they convince beyond his own uh, his own principle. Because these people that are really um, not up in capa mental capacity, they still have a soul. They still don't like it, but they finally get. All the tools are put on them in order for them to agree to go do a dastardly, and they're handed all the tools to go do something they would have never, ever been capable of doing at all. But that's your government. To create what? To create the illusion that that's what's going on. That thing, that terror. The terror that is them, because they rule by intimidation. This intimidation is built into this encryption backdoor reason. They don't have to go to the FISA court. They don't have to in the first place, and then they put the intimidation of the IRS on a corporation. That is terrorism. And, and so I want to see a meme about that. Extortion. The tax is extortion. Let's see a meme about that. Maybe let's see the memes on what to do about it, too. That'd be cool. Let's get beyond this main problem that was a simple problem. It's bigger than that. 
And, and so what about all this tech and all this where it's coming from? And it had been kind of a theme going on. I finally realized it was a, I didn't really think about it as I go through and I just see interesting stories. Uh, but this theme's been coming on. We talked a little bit about this little place. It's not a nation. In fact, I talked about it in the uh, UCY chat and uh, Ron Stevens' uh, broadcast. Uh, this will be for Sunday, not not the Thursday show for you all there. Uh, about the fact that we did the study and did the pictures, and no one came back to me to show contrary evidence that this uh, Israel's not a nation. It's not a country. It was simply a tribe of of the peoples of one of the sons of Israel called Judah, having a territory called Judah. I'll just leave the short form name. And that did not include Jerusalem. So it's not any of the things, that, this, this thing, it's just a tribe of people. They, they would be the first Jews from Judah, was the first Jews. They didn't comprise all the Israelites. And so we've touched all this, but how important now has this, this fiction of Israel popped up? I'm not talking about the men, now we're talking about a, a fabricated state that not anybody can agree with, but in this technology we hear over and over how instrumental the Israeli technology companies are involved in this. Here's a story. Everyone benefits from Israeli tech companies except the Palestinians. In an op-ed from a special annual edition of The Economist, Benjamin Netanyahu calls his country. And I wasn't off. Yehudans, that's how you pronounce that. So I wasn't too far off with his name. Benjamin Netanyahu calls to country in his country Innovation Nation. Talk about branding, folks, of a corporation, the, uh, or a, a sinister plan. The Israeli Prime Minister writes that, the, quote, the people everywhere benefit from Israeli innovations in their mobile phones, car navigation systems, life-saving drugs, medical devices, even the cherry tomatoes in their salads. So now we see we have to bow down to this technology, but is it really a benefit? No, if you look around, what it is, it's the, it's the encroachment and trespass of everything you know. It's war, is what these people are innovating. And a lot of money, the so-called, a lot of shekels, I suppose, you can call them anything, go to Israel to do this against you. And I was thinking differently. It's possible the benefits that they bestow are the servitude to you. And if you think about this right, maybe the Palestinians are going to be the last people on earth that actually show an autonomy from the global order. I want you to think about that. The benefit that governments bestow is not a benefit that doesn't come without some attachment. Something, somewhere, some obligation, some duty to it, like your tax liability. And he's telling you that Israel gives, is so prevailing today, the transition in technology and the technocrats is so, uh, uh, so, so absolute that they are in every aspect of your life. And it's not even actually a state. It's a group of people we're not even talking, we can't even say that they're Jews. They're taking territory outside of the territory of Judah. This is why we go to the Zionistic thing, the Zionism, Zionistas. These people are telling you that everybody except Palestine is getting uh, the benefit of this war weaponry. And you're on the, you're on the pointy end of it, not on, you're given the shaft, uh, you're on the pointy end. And this is the promotion. They tell you right up front, if you know what you're looking at, this is a pervasive problem, though they provide it as a benefit to you. And you take it on. Why? I don't know why. It's because that's how we are. Now, moving this into the discussion we had a little bit last week, and uh, it got pretty, uh, I don't even know I like using the word sophomoric, but it sure got a schoolyard mentality. It got uh, just non, non, very minimal intelligence working on bullying tactics went on regarding this Jerusalem that came out, epitomized by this the, the protection of these people that will tell you that they have, are bestowing everybody but the Palestinians a benefit. And no one said that. Well, why not? Why, what's the problem about giving to the, to the Palestinians? If you're actually a peaceful people and you can live with people, why are you discriminating? Why didn't the world call that out either? And there's a lot to, I guess, say here. But here, in this lineage of problem that we expose in this bullying gang mentality where these minor players are having a vast experience, a vast effect on your life in the promotion of this technocracy, and these infiltratable, vulnerable type technologies that alter you, that alter your uh, environment in that area, 
that control you. IRS going after Coinbase it should have been a big notice to people. It's deeper than just the Coinbase thing. It's way deeper. The U.S. will be taking names <laughs> during the UNGA vote on the Jerusalem move, Envoy Haley warns. Uh, what an embarrassment this whole thing is. Uh, they don't think it's, uh, these, these Zionist protectors don't think that, uh, but uh, this is all the plan. The U.S. will be taking names, you know, taking names, a, a big threat. The United States is, thinks it's a, a bully big enough and bad enough that it can threaten uh, other nations. And in this case, I'm, put, I'm going neutral with the U.N. If it was a place where all these people meet without any extra programs, programs, systems, uh, it, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about all that. I'm talking about a place where all these nations come together to work out their differences. In that limited sense, uh, I, I don't have a problem with that. That uh, the United States went to bully 128 other countries in the nation. Don't take their don't take their input. No, just bully them. It says we'll be taking names. If you vote against this, uh, our move, uh, our embassy move to Jerusalem. Now I've also said. I don't know. I guess you could put your. I guess you could put your uh, embassy anywhere, but it has to be in a country. First of all, and that hasn't been established. So I don't even know if it's within the sovereign power to do so. And Congress didn't have a right to declare the people's other another per people's land what it was or what it wasn't. Neither to impose to raise this level of people that are really Zionistas to the level of a state, let alone a country. And it's not really a country, even though I found interesting. It's registered as one as the UN. How'd that happen without the Palestinians having one, given they wanted one, given that they could? Because they're, they really had the land before we got there, right? So they, they don't have to be named anything. But based on this bullying, the schoolyard bullying of the United States of the entire rest of the world, uh, then Trump comes out like validating this right before this vote. We'll save a lot. So this business guy, uh, Art of the Deal d d dude, it negotiates this this way as a financial factor, and this is what I wanted to focus on. We'll save a lot. He thinks this is all reduced down. He thinks bullying and withholding benefits. See, they want to tell you, well, their benefit is only what they gave you, and your benefits that they bestowed are coming with an obligation and duty. He says right out he proved it. Trump said threatens Trump threatens to stop aid to UN members over Jerusalem vote. So Haley, I just have I can't tell you how. I don't even know what to say about these people, how low this is, how low uh, spirit mentality uh, these people are, uh, how what bullies these people are. She says we'll be taking names. I know she got that from uh, from a strategy. We'll be taking names, and Trump comes and says, and when, when we take those names and we stop the aid, we're going to be saving a lot of money. Like that is really what we're after here when dealing with a whole the entire world, uh, whether we can strong arm them, arm them into capitulating to do something that's really principally, that's morally reprehensible it, it, from what I can see. And I think I've proved it in many different ways in attempting to try and find the answer. I think it's provable that it's just an immoral condition that's being put on. And the United States is willing, these people in the, in the seats of decision are willing to uh, strong arm other people in order to make it so. Now, so this is nothing different to me than the, than the mafia. And I've said that. It's a system of organized crime. I mean, I don't know what else to say uh, about what the, you know them by what they do, folks. You know them by their deeds. So his address, oh, we'll save a lot of money when we don't fund the UN and we don't fund these people. We don't stop. We don't continue to give the aid. Now, I'm not one to agree with the aid. Maybe they should have stood up on their own and not needed it. There's another way to approach this. But, but when you're giving the aid and you stop putting it out there in this new world where Russia and China are sitting to pick up where the United States fail, is that a, I don't see how that could be a viable uh, response in the bullying nature that's now evidenced that we should not be okay with as a nation. I don't see how we could be okay with that, especially with all the unanswered, if I can call them questions, th that we can show demonstrably would not provide for the authority, even by sovereignty, uh, for the United States to do what it did or acknowledge what it has in order to strong-arm people. I mean, really look at that, folks. This is what I told you, that if the government's willing to do that to the world, they're willing to do that to you easy. You ain't nothing. And if you think that they're not willing to buff 
buffalo you into a place and to keep control of you, like let's say the Bundy issue, on a persecution, that the, it's probably not that the persecution, we're so far beyond the authority to do so, but we're now proving the oppressive persecution on something that they were supposed to be duty bound uh, in order to protect. We're so far beyond trust, it's not even funny. And they were supposed to avoid the appearance of the breach. But we're willing on a national level to embarrass ourselves, allow these people to embarrass us, says, I'm going to strong arm, I'm going to extort from you. See how this works? See, civil rights is for everyone. You have the right to be extorted against and no other. That's what civil equal rights, you want to call them human rights? Those are conditioned further. Those are conditioned to the fact that you're going to, whoever becomes the central power, that's what they're going to be able to do. You have the right subject to it. And that's what the United States is showing on this way. It says sovereignty. It has no sovereignty in a, in a land that's not a land of the country. And I've suggested to you, uh, given the evidence and the pictures of the, of the mapping and all that and the explanations I could read, Judah was the son of Israel. That's where the first Jews are mentioned from Judah. It's just a name given to a tribe the northern extent of which was in Bethlehem, but not to Jerusalem, that also included the territory for the Jew, was not a state, not a country, not a nation. But they came out and measured, the, the UN declares the U.S., uh, the U, uh, Israel to be a country, uh, was interesting to me, where we found 128 countries, notwithstanding the bullying, extortive threat of Trump, as mentioned and started out, from Haley by saying, we're going to be taking names. And you know the extension of that. You know, she short, cut short what she was actually would have said. And what it means. That there's going to be ramifications. And you see where they go right to. The war of economics is no less the war of the bombs. They went right to the to the funding. They keep people on ta They keep people in the benefit. Like Israel was saying, you benefit from our technology. Well, I don't think so, actually. Actually. Not with all the hidden attachments and accoutrement, uh, accoutrements of, of all this. 128, notwithstanding the extortive attempt, the bullying, 128 countries vote in favor of the UN resolution condemning United States recognition of Jerusalem as Israel capital. Uh, I think we're watching a turning point in the world, and I think I'm happy to see it, uh, given the direction that the United States has taken. I'm not talking about the people of the United States of America. Uh, I think we're kind of helpless to all this. Uh, because we're not united. We want to divide ourselves. But uh, but at any rate, uh, the 128 companies said, we don't care about your aid anymore. Now, that to me is a big deal. And uh, with the changing uh, so-called polarity of this uh, world now, and, it, and Russia finally kicking it off and doing their own thing, uh, and China doing the same, and then they come in coalition, notwithstanding their differences. See, they're working that t t together. To have everybody come out and say, uh, to be in condemnation of the United States and Israel is a, I think, a bigger thing than what's been uh, reported, especially right after. There's really no talk about this. But Israel was determined, was Israel was included in the list of countries, which I found, I didn't truly reappreciate this until I saw it on the list. And, I, and so I, I tweeted out, based on the chart of the voting, it was like 128 in favor of the condemnation, uh, nine were were uh, were opposing it, and 35 uh, shameful countries abstained. Uh, one I think was Australia, and one was Canada, Kanukistan. <laughs> uh, they abstain because they don't they they don't want to be looking like they're going to have a point on it. Interestingly, the UK voted for the condemnation, and I have a suspicion that based on that Balfour intention, they couldn't. And that would negate everything that they've agreed to in that, even though it's a false imposition. And so we're seeing the world change. The United States may have really lost it here. Big time, folks. I don't even know what this... I, I don't have the words to describe how big this this could be. And I think it's not could. I think it did. And I, I looked at the chart uh, that claimed that Israel had a vote. They were one of the nine. Then you start looking at who voted for it. Well, except for Honduras and Guatemala, if memory serves... The others were really protectorates of the United States. 
Think about this, folks. Now, what is Israel being named as a country without an actual land more than their occupation? They're condemned in the East at this point for being an occupier. How are they deemed to be a country that the UN has caused their own, uh, this is the walking wound, the self-inflicted wound? How were they able to have a vote and the Palestinians not? If I'm, and I'm an era and they were there, I missed it. But I didn't see the Palestinians get a vote the state of Palestine, if they wanted one. See, I don't think they can actually do that. They may want one because it's the only option they have if, the, if Israel becomes a state, so-called. They want some land, but that wouldn't. they, would, they don't need to be a, a, a state that way. They're just a people inhabiting a space. They may or may not choose to be an organized space, but that's being foisted upon them because of this fraudulent, this criminal imposition, this immoral imposition. But I, I wrote a Twitter based on this chart that showed that Israel was a country. I said, Israel is a country? Uh, my question, Israel was a, is a country? And then I made the comment, I think I solved the problem. Because if you understand that actually Israel is not a country, that's a fabrication. They don't have a place to have an embassy for the United States. And, and the question says, well, what then is it? Well, it's a tribe. Israel's not anything. Israel's a fabrication. The, 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 the Jew, if you will, is a small tribe. And it only had a territory as identified by that name. And the, and the fraud is the extension of calling them Israel or Israeli when, in fact, the tribe was, was, this, was made of people of the son of Israel, a man. These were men. It's a whole different analysis. So taking out Israel as a country solves the problem. And I said so on the Twitter, and I mean, I'm open up to any opening, uh, any uh, conversation, uh, but it doesn't come. And I'm only doing it from what I can see the black and white tells me, folks, because if they are deserving of the land, they deserve it. Uh, but if not, then what harm are we doing to the people, the inhabitants of Palestine? And the world came and just said no. They finally, finally, finally said no. We're not going with you, your intimidation, your lie, uh, the, dis the disrespect, the hypocrisy, folks. Do you understand? We go on and on. We're being, the United States is being shown for the, really, the fraud it has become. And we, we were so much better, I can tell you. Again, land law, this kind of thing, bringing people into power having ability to, to keep everybody off your land and be able to work it the way you wanted to by your decision and not having anybody interfere, not having anybody tax your life down to nothing, uh, regulate it down to nothing. Wow. I mean, this is a big deal. It has never happened before. And then we let it slip like this. It's unforgivable at some level. And then we go, we don't recognize property law actually in the United States and then we are trying to claim there's a property in someone that ha is a fraudulent imposition? Uh, 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 folks, put this together. You have to reorient what's really going on. If I am incorrect or wrong, if I am wrong, explain to me how it's right. Uh, this is in all, in all honesty. We're talking about mil literally millions of people are dying. To me, it's a big fraud, it's a big crime, it's a big political imposition, as they seem to be all are. These are tools of war. I don't know what more to say. You said tools of war. How do you have a world of peace? How do you have peace on earth? How is this goodwill toward men? So, we identify Israel as a country we start our own problem. This is, this is the self-inflicted wound. We don't have, uh, we don't do that. There's no place to put an embassy, and it opens the land back up to. Well, then maybe, but you need to set, settle down, and verify the claim of the land. And I think if the if the information I have is correct, the only claim that uh, a so-called Jew, and I put that in the sense of Judah, the tribe of Judah, the son of Israel, the of of Twelve other, uh, eleven other tribes, folks. They could only claim up to Bethlehem, and they wouldn't have Jerusalem anyway. 
until we get that settled down and stop this bullying, this nonsense, which is a cover so they don't have to do that. They're just going to come and beat you down. That's what this is all about. Proving to you it doesn't matter. Reason doesn't matter. Right doesn't matter. Property doesn't matter. If you're big enough in the world and you have the right allies, you just go beat down on people. So for the government, for the United Nations, the governments of the world to come together in the UN and say no is the first step. And I'm going to be interested to see how they start to enforce this. And they haven't enforced the the uh, genocide against the Palestinian. And I'm not just talking about those in Gaza. It's everywhere, everywhere over there, the genocide of the Semite under the color of being a Semite has to stop. Whatever wrong I have stated here is not wrong enough that wouldn't make that have to happen anyway. And I think bringing to some of it an objective basis to begin, they don't bring that basis because if they did, they could answer it pretty quickly. If they don't, they can extend this and use the tool that was created called Israel. Contrary to all the other evidence, because that's just the way the method works, like everything else. We create something, and there is so, and then we're big and bad enough, or we are capable enough to protect it. You have you have to see how this works. They've been doing this in all manners of area, subject matter areas, everywhere. And so you start looking at things in a different way. And so right up on the, all happening at the same time about this Jerusalem thing, uh, which is really. Undefensible, indefensible. I don't care how big and bad the bully is. You know, the the point about the bully is, and I've learned this myself. Uh, I wasn't that big when I was going through school. Not that I that I'm that big now, uh, but I learned being a, a little guy that didn't really grow until after I got out of high school, uh, grow up too tall. Uh, I learned you had to defend yourself because people that are bigger than you will come at with a lower mentality. They want to come after you. And it was just out of sheer defense. I mean, sheer sheer. Survival, if you will. You've, a lot of us have felt that when we were in school. But you go after the bully right right where, right at the tip of his nose. And you know they become your friends. Or they become someone to just avoid you. And this is what's going on in the world. We've got a bully that's super bigger, bad, that really is capable. But it looks like the world's going to have to punch this bully in the nose. Now, the harm's going to come to these people in financial constructions and, defer, and and sanctions and things like that. So that's what I want you to look at. Cryptocurrencies are a financial t- weapon of destruction or to, can be used as that. So I'm tying this all back there again about how they transition us into the modernized, more regulated world that they sell to you is, is uh, more libertine, I suppose. Uh, and... And then they do their, they, underneath the cover of all this fraud, they have their actions going to put a, a cover like they're doing. They continue the op, and they continue to continue control the thought of your mind, and they make it look like they're the event. As I said, the, Israel benefits everybody. And I, I look at it, I don't see how, that's, how my life is more benefited by all this in, intrusion and trespass now than it was before. That they'll do things to you, that they'll claim is to your benefit. It's kind of like the drug the drug dealer. No, you'll like this stuff. Well, here, I'll give you the benefit. I'll give you, I'll give you your first, your first, uh, uh, your, and they gave it a nice little first trip. Pretty soon you're messed up. And it's costing your life. It is your life. And so they promote it out the gate real nice. And then they keep you talking like they're doing something to help you. Now, just providing it to you, it, it becomes the benefit. And this is kind of reminding me of this part where Sessions orders DOJ to review report the Obama administration gave Hezbollah a pass. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is launching a review, a review, remember, a review, folks, of a law enforcement initiative called Project Cassandra after an investigative report was published this week claiming that Obama administration gave a free pass to Hezbollah's drug trafficking and money laundering operations to help ensure the Iran nuclear deal would stay on track. This story goes on to say, give all the propaganda about how the 
attorney generals protecting you and the war on drugs and all this other stuff. Now, my observation was, based on the statement frame, Obama administration gave a free pass to Hezbollah's drug trafficking and money laundering, was to ask the question, was this to move trafficking, uh, the trafficking organization CIA heroin and to perpetuate the drug war and the DEA fast and furious cartel divide and conquer U.S. drug import deals? It isn't the, that mili militant group, namely Hezbollah, legitimately Lebanese. Now, why are they looking now? It means no, nothing. But there's only a review. Uh, so we'll wait to the review. What if they agree to it? It's okay. Does it stop all this other stuff? And if they're going to focus on Hezbollah, which I don't even think would be doing this, and if they were, well, isn't this the game of war? Isn't this is us uh, being worked out? Isn't now we see Hezbollah as part of this game, uh, got, the, the use of the CIA and uh, the CIA in, in promoting all this? Where where does the CIA heroin? How does it get trafficked? We we really don't know. Maybe it was going through drug trafficking, but it's at the instance of the CIA, and it's ultimately going to be imported here, and then they'll complain about the opioid. A problem, which again is a self-inflicted wound, isn't it? And it may be interestingly co consist consistent, coincident with uh, the uh, legalization, so-called, of, of, um, of marijuana. A potential cure for it. As long as they get their taxes. As long as they get their take. So, I wanted to point out here, they're doing a review on, a, on uh, this Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a real problem to the United States and the Middle East and Israel. And so they want to put the taint on uh, of drug drug trafficker. I want to point out the CIA. If they weren't uh, drug trafficking, they would have wouldn't allow and promote the the uh, production of heroin in Afghanistan and other places. Whatever they're doing in other places. So let's not refer, let's be careful on what we get focused on and all the things we don't know and all the things we don't put together. Now, as as well as looking at the sessions here, is looking at um, uh, looking at the uh, Hezbollah. A drug trafficking, and not looking at the CIA drug trafficking. Uh, we have also a report that came out. Jeff Sessions orders examination of the Bundy case after mistrial over prosecution bungling. And this is another big story. And I also noticed that it's interesting. There seems to be some sort of a flip switched in the administration. All of a sudden, things are coming out and working more than not working. Whatever direction. I'm making a decision on the uh, on the probability, on the um, the rightness of it. I'm saying that there has some, been a, a switch flip, uh, flipped in the Washington that all of a sudden things uh, have been smoothed out. And so, uh, but and I'm kind of partial t to knowing, wanting to see this one, but my, I have a criticism of it, and you should too. Jeff Session orders the examination of the Bundy case after mistrial over prosecution bungling. Folks, this is not just bungling. This is a real big deal. Of what happened. This has becomes this has moved into persecution with all that was there. I don't understand how this is still a case. Apparently, in the end of January, look how long now all of a sudden the trial stops. They're going to be making some paperwork uh, to try and show that this thing should be dismissed. And I suppose they're going to try and get it with the prejudice. This is not even enough. But they're going to look at this snafu. They call, they've diminished what's going on here. A statement that the quote, the Attorney General takes this issue very seriously and has personally directed that an expert in the department's discovery obligations be deployed to examine the case and advise as to the steps, said IEND Pryor, Principal Deputy Director of Public Affairs. I want to point out some why only an, a review under discovery? Why not under the power of jurisdictions and the authorities? And the producers. And where's the trustee for this? Why only this narrow? Number one. Number two is where was Jeff Sessions when they created the strategy to do the prosecution in the first instance that he didn't have a handle on this guy and this, uh, this, uh, this persecutor. And I can't remember the guy's name, Meyer or something like that. Uh, where was he? This is the respondent superior to this. Where is Jeff Sessions to have stopped this nonsense, to agree by an omission even, to allow it to go? They don't just do this. They go, uh, my understanding is they do powwows about how they prosecute these cases. 
It has to go through every, uh, the check has to go through for everywhere. Where was Jeff Sessions before this so-called snafu happened? Where is Jeff Sessions to check the FBI before they go and beat down people like our, our chairman at Jefferson Mining District for trying to get a show cause against the culture of crime uh, years ago in the Secretary of Attorney that may have, and I can't say it would, may have interfered with what happened at the, at the Bundy thing. Uh, the Hammonds would have caused attention to it before, would have interfered possibly with, with, with these things, called attention to them then but on the inside of the law enforcement. Where is the Department of Justice? It is just us. After the fact. We get no justice. This thing was handled so bad after the fact, now he's going to go look at it. It's not an answer. And I'm wanting to call people's attention to that. I was, I'm encouraged that there's going to be this investigation Excuse me, an examination. Now, before it was a review on the other issue. This one's an examination. I wonder what the test is going to be, folks. So I'm encouraged that they're doing it. But where was this examination? Why wasn't this done ahead of time? If justice is intended, is it to me an evidence that it's not intended? Uh, my, our experience is that it's not intended. This is a culture of crime, and the organs of government are set up to protect it. So I made a comment against this one on the on the phrase, a failure to turn over such evidence violates due process. Judge Navarro said in the courtroom, as reported by the Arizona Republic, quote, a fair trial at this point is impossible. Impossible. How can you continue? And wasn't she the cause of that, allowing the deprivate the li motion limine to de to deprive the defendants of a full defense? In allowing them to bring forward the same, the comment, the, the, the problem that the poster at the YouTube, the comment or the YouTube has, where's the evidence of their claim? It was prohibited from being brought in. Where is the culpability of the judge here? And she identifies this, at this point, it's a, the fair trial is impossible. Why are you continuing? This is a denial of justice, and this is a producer persecution, not a prosecution. And it continues, folks. This is the whole problem I have with this. Justice is not being served from top to bottom. They're coming at this after the fact. If justice is supposed to be, and a careful justice is supposed to be done, this is a travesty, and justice is not possible. It's a denial of justice at the highest levels. It's beyond travesty. I don't hear people putting and orienting this thing together. They're just happy. Oh, there's some of this fit favorable stuff coming out. But this is worse, folks. This is way worse if we were to accept the way law was supposed to be working and it was faithfully administered. We're so far back and down and oppressed, we don't even wreck. We're just happy for the crumbs that they give us and it's not even enough. And I don't even know really, you know, I start looking at this myself, how, how actually Protective is this thing when it's done right. Even out outstretches what my mind, I think, can conceive. If I were to start applying really what's supposed to have been done if justice were intended. And yet we accept this deviance of the normalization, which is doesn't even meet close to the standards, and we're okay with the crumbs they drop to us. No, I'm not okay with it. I think anybody else that sees that it had to have a higher standard wouldn't be okay with it. Uh, but we aren't speaking in that context. Uh, we're not voicing uh, the problem. We're not challenging. We're not getting together to challenge. All these people should be being put on official complaints so that the, these, uh, these um, people in government realize that people are watching more than they, more and more educated than they see uh, on YouTube. And they're making records to expose how bad it's gone. And, de and then the people demand that that has to stop. That has, this has to stop. Like this presumption that you're a person liable to tax. That has to stop. 
is a person liable to the to the statute. That ha- a producer is not liable to hardly any statutes relative to what the BLM would be interested in when operating within their property rights. And to deny that you have a property right is the is the definition of injustice in defense of yourself against someone's allegation who was actually the trustee is the the tr- he's a, the trustee as well protecting that conveyance. By the warrant that the government was supposed to give to the to the property owner, even in the one and two things that Cliven claims, and since we don't really hold that standard, that slips away from us. I'm pausing here to you need to think about how extensive the failures truly are. I don't even get close to burrowing in on them. It's like I tried, you know, what is it, 10, 12 years now. 15, I don't even know how long it's been, over a decade. I, I, I looked at the mining law and I said, there's a grant. And I was just coming to, to awareness of what that meant, what that really, really meant. And I said, let's, all I got to do is get the miners to understand that there's a grant, what that means, and within a year we should be done with this. Everybody will get it. The government, we can tell the, we can tell the government, we can show how they did it wrong, how they're not supposed to be doing what they're doing. We identified a whole lot of things. I figured it'd take a year. You know those folks, those miners don't, still don't get it? Oh, they'll talk and word, mouth the words, but the, you know they still don't get it? That's, that's just like all y'all. The microcosm of the miner is America. And I'm still not off a of square one with actually telling the fulfillment of a grant, and I can't get to the other ten things that I've developed over time I've started to see were wrongs. If we can't fix that, what are we talking about the others? If I can't fix the first one, I have no foundation that will work either. And so we talk about this denial of justice, I see. A fair trial. This is a discussion of the judge that I would challenge for competency. Well, and I enter and competency in law. I can't even see it. A fair trial at this point is impossible, she says. And this thing continues? That's not enough? Should be a problem for you all. Now, when, since when do their rules and, and, their, and their processes overcome justice is another question. Their rules, their procedures are not to overcome justice. When something became impossible, it was supposed to be ended. Not drug on some more. Not allow them to take a couple more swipes to justify the criminal persecutor being able to try and justify some measure of his persecution. So, I, I, I guess I've said enough on that. There's more to, so much more to say. The uh, only thing that comes to my mind to talk to right now is how this lays out this government right now. In the, the way, uh, only, people, only thing that most people recognize is how the, government has been, the United States government has been a criminal against them. And we didn't understand how that could be. And we were underneath our thoughts and our programming that, that, that and we were told that that's, presumed to be the law and until you throw it over it, it's not it's law and it's right and it's not now, all these presumptions they put on us are frauds they're a color of authority that diminish us that's a felony in most places i see it's called the extortion which they have right to impose upon you if you're one of the statuses that they can what if you're not or the coercion which you're both that's the right that's the right you have about the property and the extortions about the property you keep these understood and you start understanding how this thing starts to roll down. It gives you a place and a foundation to speak and you always have an authoritative a challenge to make against the color of authority that's asserting its authority to hurt you. Even though it's saying, even under the color of benevolence. I seriously do not understand how an Israeli tech company making products that hack my system are to my benefit. That Netanyahu could say I benefited from his cabal or his organized uh, criminal organization. Speaking of criminal organization, CDC gets a list of forbidden words. Now this is a little bit of denied, but it was kind of interesting. A CDC gets a list of forbidden words. I was thinking of... um, George Carlin here in his seven words, he got beat down over his seven words of 
uh, that he shouldn't say, but free speech kind of wins out there. Their words in, uh, in short list here was uh, fetus, transgender, and diversity. The Trump administration is prohibiting CDC officials from using seven words and phrases in official documents uh, being prepared for the uh, next year's budget. So again, it's all financial, all constructed. It's all, there is a corporation too. Remember, the fin anything financial uh, in 28 U.S.C. 3002, you're dealing with a corporation. The, jo the Trump administration is prohibiting officials from the tops, uh, at the nation's top public health agency from using a list of word phrases, including fetus and transgender, in official documents being prepared for next year's budget with another rep petition. The words are, the forbidden words are vulnerable, entitlement, diversity, transgender, fetus, evidence-based, and science-based. Uh, now, I'm going to stop right here. There, uh, the, I think the link I have, uh, another link I have, actually shows a, um, a twit, Twitter stream of the uh, CDC director. And I found it fascinating, her response to this, and how she's able to say, if you don't know how to read the meta language that I point out to you, how she's able to point, uh, what she says, in denial that the government hasn't limited those words, that she shows you the process that they use that they will eventually be able to deny those things, and they're changing tact. Uh, this came from uh, it was a contest uh, that I noticed uh, from Marion Nessel. Uh, use, uh, use all seven of the CDC's forbidden words in one sentence, and then she lists them. But then I, well, I looked down and I saw the CDC director, uh, and I want to read through these because it's important to look at the words and what she says, and it points out what agencies do, as I've told you, is to subvert and hurt you. Uh, to to segue over and do what they need to get done, make the outcomes they need. It's all in that process. I want, and she said, the uh, oh, oh, CDC director, Brenda Fitzgerald, I want to assure you that uh, there are no banned words at CDC. We will continue to talk about all, all our important public health programs. Next, Twitter. You may be understandably concerned about recent media reports alleging the CDC is banned from using certain words in the budget documents. Now, she's constrained to budget documents. I want to assure you that the CDC remains committed to our public health mission as a science and evidence-based institution. Next, Twitter. As part of our commitment to provide the common defense of the country against health threats, science is and will remain the foundation of our work. Well, what have I told you about the science being fraud? What if it's adjective science? Right? What this evidence base? What if the evidence is a fraud? And she's talking about the fact that the law requires this. They really can't do this, but they're, they're, they're telegraphing that they're going to remove the words that remind you what it's supposed to be. In fact, that's a lie what they're doing. They do nothing actually science-based. It's adjective science-based. It's political lobbying-based science. That's the way they do it. Political science. The evidence is, a, is fraudulent. We know this all by experience through other agencies. That she's using all the words within the constraint of the method they use in order the outcome-based dis discussion and consensus of policymaking. CDC has long history of making public health and budget decisions that are based on the best available science and data and for the benefit of all people, and we will continue to do so. Well, they don't deal with the people. They deal with corporations, don't they? So it's not all people. And this best available science is the catchphrase term for consensus-based felony. I've read, I've talked to you about all this before. I'm just telling you how they know to respond is what they do. They respond that way. And it's, it's, as soon as you read it, you can tell exactly what they're talking about. And they are actually saying they are going to eliminate evidence-based and science-based thing in for best available science. Best available, we found, is can be fraud. Fraud science is best available if there's nothing else. So when you read the meta language and you read what they're doing, you see her discuss the process, the method of so-called stakeholder input which is a felony against you. It's in-house discussion, outcome-based. HH, she goes on to another one, HHS, Health Human, House, Health Human Service, I don't know. A statement addressing media reports, quote, the assertion that HHS has banned words is a complete mischaracterization of discussion regarding the budget formulation process. So she's constraining the discussion. What about the other processes? HHS will continue to use the best science a scientific evidence available. 
if that for, that's fraud, they'll accept it, folks. That's what I keep telling you. You got to if you're not in that game, putting in your and especially getting people of authority like governments in to show that best available had another and you have another answer, uh, then they win. They, they win to destroy your life with this process. A uh, last statement she made: HHS, a statement addressing media reports continued. HHS also strongly encourages the use of outcome and evidence data in program evaluations and budget decisions. Uh, cha-ching. There it is. There's the money money uh, statement. Outcome and data, evidence data, is outcome-based decisions. It's, it's closed house agency outcomes that they then say we're going, they predispose the condition you have comment right to that predisposed outcome, and you will only answer or participate to that outcome based on what evidence you can bring to support the outcome. Is what we sued to enjoin. It's the method we sued to enjoin in 2013. You read it all over this thing. She came out to deny that there's banned words. She's telling you they're taking you down in the same way I've told you they take you down, and they don't need those seven words. So, but I did... I was signing to send a message to the woman who uh, apparently she's doing she's a, an independent researcher, uh, Marion Nessel, and uh, not to really enter the contest more than to explain something. I made this sentence using all the seven words: whether by diversity of vulnerable fetus or transgender entitlement, what if science-based quote best available science close quote is fraud? an evidence-based or outcome consensus felony. What if that isn't if and wasn't a question? Or if CDC director doesn't know, she should. And then I went back, so you go back and read that, and you say science-based, best available science is fraud, and evidence-based or outcome consensus felony is a statement, not a question, folks. And the CDC director knows that's, in fact, what's going on. I can pull it out. I made a sentence using all seven words. I think it made sense to me. And it points out to this woman, whether she knows this or not, is that she's dealing in an area that they're talking to you in a certain way and telling you that they're, gonna, they're violating you right well. It sounds like it's a denial. And explaining the method they're doing it to you by as well. And you'll get, it's hard maybe to read this, and to, per, to perceive it as I'm speaking it, because I got hash, you know, hashtags and stuff. But when you read the sentence and then read it without the if, you see the statement, and you see the fact of what they did, and you see it right in that article. As that came out, as that came out of her, uh, the, the, the CDC director's own tweet. It's not that hard to see it, and it's that fast, actually. Another story about these agencies, criminal agencies, uh, and it's looking like a good thing. Uh, EPA officials disheartened by the uh, agency's direction are leaving in droves. The reason EPA went down to uh, 15,000 employees under Obama uh, is because of the pressure from Republicans. This is an effort of the Republicans under the Obama administration on steroids, said uh, John J. O'Grady, President of the American Federation of Government Employees, Council 238, a union representative of EPA employees. So, now you got sweetheart deals, all kinds of stuff. It doesn't matter. Uh, they're diminishing the workforce. The pressure now is inside the EPA. This agency, we have done the analysis because it affects us. They use the EPA, like you know, in water problems, environmental problems. They they use it as a weapon against us. They, the states extend their authority through the EPA to to, uh, to attack producers. And we've done an analysis. We've figured out how they do it. We've got the answer into the president as a denial of justice. He won't respond. Uh, we've sent uh, comments uh, on a governmental level, because the government of the mining district is a government, uh, at on coordination, for those of you who are looking for authority, and that's 43 U.S.C. 1712, I believe. Uh, that's under the Public Lands Management, and they're not supposed to interfere, and they're not supposed to extend environment without understanding it means nature and mankind's not to the detriment of mankind, uh, where, where practicable, and they have to, that burdens on the government to do so. There's a whole bunch of standards here. But the EPA, the people that have been beating us down, are leaving now. Uh, and the, and I wanted to point out 
uh, what they claim here, who is leaving, within the agency, science is particularly is taking a hard hit. More than 27% of those who left this year were scientists, including 34 biologists and microbiologists, 19 chemists, 81 environmental engineers, and environmental scientists, and more than a dozen toxicologists, life scientists, and geologists. Let me stop there. Remember, folks, I identified with their own paperwork that these are adjective scientists, especially the ones named environmental. These are actually political lobbyists. And so another article came to describe this issue that, that people are leaving the EPA in droves uh, that, and that they, they, the media says it's a bad thing. Uh, the article in collaboration with the New York Times article, uh, more than 700 people have left the EPA, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, since Donald Trump took office. A wave of departure that puts the administration nearly a quarter of the way toward its goal of shrinking the agency to levels last seen during the Reagan administration. Now they, they deemed this as a brain drain of the EPA, but if you understand their political lobbyists, it's not a brain drain at all. All right, so this is a mischaracterization of an expectation of a of a publication that doesn't actually meet the law. And so my comment to this on the Twitter was, if these are the scientists they name, if these are adjective scientists, in other words, political lobbyists under color of scientists, which these appear to be then this is very good. No brain drain at all. And then I make a check, because this was what we sued to enjoin, uh, to help stop this nonsense that imparts itself against your life in every way, property owners' property rights. Uh, I say that the executive needs to stop its environmental, in quotes, environmental grant stream funding practices, too, which we sued to enjoin in 2013. So, there's a way to understand this a lot deeper than what's going on in the news, and they are promoting this thing as a n not a good thing. Uh, but in fact, when you look at what they were, what these people were, they were actually misappropriating public funds to come under the color of a scientist when they were actually political lobbyists within the agency, which does the outcome-based condition, right? And so another tweet came out. I put mo pretty much that that same thing, but I also identified the disheartened uh, that these scientists. Uh, that are leaving are really disheartened fraudsters. Okay, so there's a there's a whole way to analyze this. These people were really not. Uh, now they they didn't know this probably when they were going in and they went in with gung ho to save the environment. But the method and the, what they end up doing was all not right. And we caught them on the BLM side with the sage grouse to remind you. We caught them in fraud. The scientists that were involved in the agencies wouldn't sign on to what the political these uh, these agency scientists so called these so-called biologists would agree to was a, was not correct in the, in the science regarding the sage grouse that the BLM was using to perform, uh, to correct, to um, uh, promote their outcome of protecting the sage grouse as opposed to uh, property rights. This is pretty much the, the, the tail of the tape for this year and going to be going on until we stop it. I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Hana, Kwana, Kwanza, Rama, Lama, Ding Dong, Gistra, Mithra, Krishna, Melakalalika Maka Asmodia Mas Cricket Mas Happy Holiday and I hope you all have a cool Yule. Oh, and thank you to Grimner and RealLibertyMedia.com, Freedoms Network, the Social Network.com, and Yules at UCY.tv and Vince at uh, doing the YouTube. Didn't want to leave without talking to you about that. I do thank you. I don't know what you did this week. We got a lot of call, a lot of uh, views on uh, Spreaker and. YouTube. We'll talk maybe a little bit later. But uh, again, folks, uh, I'm gone. I come, I go, I come, I go. We went through a season. I hope it all works out for you all. But it's not going to end this week, and it doesn't end in the new year. And that's still coming. So as I said, thank you for tuning in. For all you all that whatever Christmas, whatever, whatever Yule, whatever holiday season you want to do, uh, enjoy your families. I do appreciate that y'all took the time to listen in, and maybe in the in the in a little bit. And all y'all that are uh, continually listening to this broadcast and looking for the next answer, don't dishearten. And this year coming up could be the it really could be the next thing. Could be the next thing because we're all got the momentum inside us now. I think that we can bring. It. Take care, and I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs and nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.